Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we will try to make this stylized sludge slash alien uh, blood sort of thing. Uh, this one is probably gonna be much shorter than my usual videos. But as always, a uh, link to the blend file is gonna be in the description. You can get it for free on my Gumroad. And of course it's fully procedural so a lot of things about it can be adjusted. So without further ado, let's just jump right into a new file. And here, let's start by creating a sphere and let's shade it smooth. And move it aside because it's gonna be the source for our particle system later down the road. But right now we can already jump into the shading tab and start building our shader. And first, let's go up here and turn down the world opacity so that we can see everything much better. Click new to get new material and give it a name. And you can delete the principled BSDF as we will use only the emission shader. So let's add it right away. And also a transparent BSDF and a mix shader to marry them together. We can already connect those together and the factor is gonna be our mask that we will create soon. So first of all, let's add a mask grave node, mask grave texture. I usually hit the spacebar and just type in uh, whatever I'm looking for, but if you want you can also use shift A just as in uh, Blender scene to add new node and the mask grave should be under the texture. Yep, it's right here. So if you're having the Node Wrangler enabled, as you probably should if you're watching this channel because I mention it literally in every single video. So just select this node, hit Ctrl T and you get the mapping and texture coordinates. Make sure that uh, your texture coordinate is set to object and the mask grave node from 3D change it to 4D because we will need that seed value later so that our particles will be randomized. Now let's move them a little bit higher add a object info node as well as math node and a value node now what we will do is we will take this random value put it in here put this value that we will animate uh, through driver put it right here and this will give us random seed value for every single sphere that we will later spawn with via particle system uh, just so it makes more sense, let me preview this node. So again, just select it, Ctrl, Shift and left mouse button. You can see how this mouse grip, uh, texture looks like. Now, to show you what I'm talking about uh, regarding this randomization of the seed, uh, let's create another mesh. Uh, it can be anything, it's gonna be our particle emitter. So let's make it a cube and put it higher. Let's also move it out of the way, it doesn't have to be in the middle. Now with this cube selected, let's go to the particle properties, click this plus button, add a particle system and under render, change the render as from halo to object. And the object is gonna be our sphere on which we are creating the material. Now if you bring out the timeline and you hit play, you should have those particles spawning. But they are super small, so in order to fix it we need to go to the scale and change it to 1. And also you can change the randomness so that they are not all the same size. And now to visualize what I was talking about, let's select the single sphere again. And now if you look at those particles spawned, if we delete this connection that's randomizing the seed, you can see that it looks like it's almost tiling because every single sphere has the exact same seed of the Musgrave texture and it just doesn't look appealing. And that is how we are using this object info value and math add node to just give it a little bit more randomness, a little bit more natural look. So let's leave the particle system for now and focus on the texture itself. We'll move to the particle systems a bit later. Now the last thing we need to do is adjust those Musgrave texture values. Let's bring the scale a little bit down. You don't have to worry about it too much because you can always adjust it later. So let's just leave it at that and then uh, we can come back to it. And one more thing in this value node, let's instead of putting a one single node, create a 
driver so simply type in hashtag frame and then divide it by um, I don't know, like 50 and then when you click play then you can see that this value changes depending on the framed animation is on uh, 50 is maybe a bit too fast because we want this to be sludgy and slimy so maybe something like 200 maybe 150 should be all right okay next step is we need to lay down some colors because right now it's just uh, black and white and obviously that's not what we want so let's go ahead and bring in a color ramp and connect the mask grave texture to it change the interpolation from linear to constant to get this nice uh, harsh contrast and let's start laying in some colors I will try to mimic the colors that you've seen in the preview scene but I spent way more time on that one so I will just leave it at that and then you can adjust it to your own liking okay and now just to bring those orange values a little bit higher we can directly in the color ramp edit the color and adjust the value here so instead of one we can type in something like three and then in the render properties enable bloom and as you can see without being connected to the emission shader uh, node it already gives off some bloom so later when we connect all of this to the emission and crank the strength up here to something like five and then we preview it you can see that those values are getting elevated even more but that's just like a side note so we can keep it a bit lower for now and let's start bringing in some nodes to mask out the areas that we don't want to see we want this material to be seen only around the middle of the sphere and in order to do that we need to bring the layer weight node another math node and simply by connecting the facing to our math node and change and change it from add to power if you preview that you can see that we can easily control the area that is visible or not visible of our sphere and this works on the view space so no matter how you rotate your camera you always have only the edges masked in and it's gonna be very useful for us because we will basically just cut out those areas and leave only the middle visible so in order to do that we need to bring those a little bit higher and then get another math node so we can just copy this one change it from power to subtract and then we want to subtract these white areas from our mass grave texture node and in result you should get something like that so you have still the mass grave texture but only in the middle as you can see the edges are always black and the black areas are gonna be transparent we can play around with this power to make it even more obvious so as you can see only the middle is uh, is visible right now now this already is the base of our material let's just bring those nodes a little bit further organize it a little bit better so you can see where everything is happening and bring in one more math node simply copy this one then change it from subtract to greater than connect this one and if you preview that node you can see that the threshold controls how much of the mass grave noise we can see usually i keep it something very low something like 0.01 so that all the black values are cut out and everything from gray to white is being visible and this can go directly into the mix shader factor and now one more important thing you have to go to material properties and make sure that the blend mode is set to alpha clip instead of opaque then those black values is gonna be transparent now let's preview it in the mix shader uh, i think we have a mistake uh, let's just switch those values and yeah that is the base shader for our effect and then the rest is done via the particle effect so let's come back to our cube uh, you can click play to see how it looks like for now and as you can see it just looks like a bunch of uh, spheres falling randomly but to give it this uh, sludgy gooey look uh, we have to adjust few values there so click on the cube 
go to the particle emitter settings and the most important that you need to change is uh, under the physics tab change the physics type from Newtonian to voids now if you play this you can already see that the behavior of our particles is already changed but that's still not what we're looking for so first of all let's add a little bit of mass just to slow down the movement of our particles as you can see it now starts moving much much slower and in an organic way now another thing we need to change is under movement inside the physics tab simply uncheck allow flight and that will already make our particles look more slimy and make them slide like mud or something now a couple more things to make the particle effects look a little bit better and give it a little bit more uh, natural look uh, first of all let's go to source and change the emit from uh, change it from faces to volume so that our particles appear inside of that cube and not on the outside it will be important later because right now as you can see when they are appearing then you see those popping everywhere and that's not very pleasing same with the disappearance of those particles they, they just simply pop out and that's also not uh, the best so we can easily improve on that now one last thing on the very top in order to control the life of those particles you have those fields under the emission where you can control the number of the particles the frame where they start to spawn so if you uh, set it to something like minus 100 then even on the first frame you already can see that they are they are spawned and they start moving if that's something you're looking for uh, the lifetime basically the longer it is the longer the the particles will hang around so if you set it to something like 150 you can see that they are going much much uh, longer and then disappear just there then you can add also a lifetime randomness uh, something like 0.5 so that they don't all uh, get destroyed at the same height but I will put the lifetime to something like 50 maybe 100 and the end when the particle basically stop spawning so it depends on your animation length uh, you can adjust it to your own purposes now in order to fix uh, the popping of the particles appearing and disappearing we can uh, simply create a texture that will drive the scale of our of our particles so it's actually very simple but it's quite well hidden as well so it took me some time uh, and research to figure it out so you go down in the particle properties uh, tab you go all the way down until you find the textures then just open it up and click on the empty field and simply click new then name it uh, however you want so like scale control and then immediately as you can see the particles just disappeared so we need to go to the texture tab because right now this texture is all black we need to change it from image or movie to a blend so we have the nice gradient from black to white and as you can see our particles appeared back but something wrong is happening it's not as um, smooth as it was before it's even worse than it was before and that is because under this influence tab in the texture properties you have all the different things that the texture can control so right now by default I believe uh, the general time is checked so simply uncheck that one and check size and then under mapping change coordinates from global to strand particle and this as you can see can already help with those popping particles while they appear as you can see that they are appearing very small in the black and then they are growing over time and that is controlled by the colors under colors you have to check the color ramp and then super deep down all those menus you have the color ramp that is all the way up here but you can control it only from here so that's uh, it's pretty complicated to get in here 
but once you get there, everything is pretty straightforward. So first of all, I recommend to bring up the alpha all the way up, so you have a clear vision what you're doing. And now you can control how those particles behave in terms of their scale. If you bring it all the way here, and you can see that they only appear by the very end of their lifetime, and then they're growing to their full size, and then they disappear because their lifetime is over. So I recommend something like this, and maybe bring the white value a little bit closer so that they reach their final uh, size a, a little bit faster. And as you can see, we got rid of the problem of popping our particles uh, when they appear. Now one more thing, as you can see when they disappear, they also pop out. And that can be easily fixed with a little bit of shader edit. So first of all, let's add a empty. It can be plain axis, doesn't really matter. Let's scale it up a little bit, so that it's roughly this size. And then let's click on our sphere, the single particle where we created our shader. We will need to add another spherical gradient coming from this empty that will smoothly transition our shader from visible to invisible before the particle actually dies out. If it doesn't make sense yet, then I hope it will in a second, as we will make it. So, inside this shader of our single particle, let's create a gradient texture. And again, as you have the Node Wrangler enabled, simply Ctrl T, get another texture coordinate and mapping. And this time, let's change the texture coordinate from object as well, but the object being Click this uh, eyedrop button and choose the empty that we just created under our uh, sludge. Now if we change our gradient texture from linear to spherical and then preview it, you can see the area of effect of our empty. If you move it then you can see that the area is moving as well. So let's keep it a little bit lower, but just above the level where the spheres start to uh, disappear. So something like this I would say. And now simply we will add this white mask to our existing mask to cut out those areas to make them invisible. So in order to do that we need to move those nodes a little bit further to make some space and in between this subtract and greater than we will need another subtract node so simply clone this one and now we need to subtract this area, this gradient texture, from whatever we already have. So simply plug it to the second slot. And now if we preview the mix shader, now let's also bring this empty a little bit higher. And as you can see, this material disappears when it gets closer to this empty. We can uh, control the size of this area simply by scaling this empty in and out and we no longer have this uh, popping effect of uh, disappearing spheres. It doesn't look so obvious right now. We'll make it even bigger. So this is basically the core of the effect you've seen in the previous scene. Of course, you can get the exact values that I used in the previous scene simply by downloading it from my Gumroad for free, uh, link in the description. But I recommend you do it yourself and then you come up with your own applications or some creative uh, solutions using this method. And I hope you can share with me whatever you created. Uh, you can share with me via Twitter or Instagram, links for that in the description as well. And yeah, if you liked it then share it with your friends and I'll see you in the next one. If you have any requests as to what would you like me to see doing next, then feel free to leave the comment. I'm reading all of them since there is uh, just a couple every video, so there is no problem with that. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.